hey guys welcome to tech learnings today we are going to talk about a concept of java which i think everyone is familiar with the, the concept is method overriding now recently i have been a part of certain interviews uh, and uh, i found that uh, sound knowledge of uh, this concept is uh, uh, probably missing right basic understanding is there but when asked in uh, a bit more depth then uh, people find it tough to answer all right so i thought why not uh, uh, create a video over this concept so that we can uh, understand uh, how things actually work okay now for i have written here a parent class and a child class all right and i am overriding this method which is public void show it is printing parent in the parent class and it is printing child in the child class all right so let's see how things work in java when we try to override methods okay so i'm not an, uh, explaining the concept here uh, that uh, what exactly is method overriding but trying to play with the method overriding so that when uh, we ask basically okay if we write like this what would happen or if what if uh, we do like this then what will be the output so we are going to see certain uh, conditions or you can say certain use cases of method overriding out here okay so first let's uh, try to create the parent class object and uh, let's try to invoke the show method all right so these two are the instance methods they are known static methods of uh, parent and child class i have created the object of parent class here and trying to invoke the show method so let's see which class method uh, gets invoked so i have already saved this uh, java file in tl projects directory so let's try to compile child dot java java child all right so the method which is invoked is the parent method and this is uh, expected as well since we created the parent class object now let's create the child class object similarly first kind of happy path we try to run so this time what would happen child class method should get invoked cool so we have parent and we have child now uh, since in Java we can do something like this as well let's say parent p1 is new child equals new child so we can assign we can create this object and assign its reference to a reference variable of type parent and let's see this time which method gets invoked okay let's eliminate these two we do not need okay so child class method gets invoked okay this is the perfect overriding at runtime basically it is decided that which show method is going to get invoked and uh, the child class method gets invoked okay so this case is uh, cool now uh, now what else uh, let's see what if one of the methods is static okay so there is an error in this case compile time error overridden method is static all right so if any of the methods let's try to make this one also a static and let's see all right so now for here i write down uh, let's say in sort of comments what all things work so in case of uh, non-static methods we saw that uh, uh, in this scenario the child class method is invoked so let's write here where should i write here it's a child class methods method is invoked now uh, what about uh, 
when we saw the method is static then in that case we get a compile time error and uh, what if both the methods are static all right so in this case parent class method is invoked even though the reference uh, is of child class okay so parent class method gets invoked the here few points we know that both the methods must be static all right so if any of them is static and another one is non static then it's a compile time error both methods must be static or both must be non static cool else you will get a compilation error or i right, write compile time error okay uh, so the next point that uh, we want to see is either both must be static and uh, either both must be non static now one more thing here when both the methods are static then actually we do not call this as method overriding the correct word is method hiding since uh, in case of uh, overriding basically uh, since this method now become a part of class right it's a static method it's not related to instance of the class so we call it method hiding okay so it's not method overriding actually in case of static methods it's always the method hiding so so in case of static methods it's called it is called method or function hiding it's not overriding now what if uh, now this excess privileges let's see excess privileges now we have uh, excess privileges in the order public protected default private now public is considered to be the strongest then it is less stronger than less stronger default less stronger and then private is considered to be the weakest now for the rule of java says that you in uh, in case of uh, your parent child right it should not be in child it should not be a weaker access privilege all right so either uh, it should be equals equal to the same access privilege as that present in your parent class or it should be stronger all right so like for example here uh, it is default access privilege and it is now here public so public is stronger all right so weaker to stronger relationship is allowed basically so let's try to compile as well okay so compilation successful so weaker to stronger access privilege is allowed just we need to remember this all right or either both are uh, both either both privileges must be same or weaker to stronger is allowed so either the access privileges privilege either the access privileges must be same or or weaker to stronger all right else again it's a compile time error that you are trying to uh, assign a weaker access privilege let's try this attempting to assign weaker access privileges okay so this is about weaker access privileges you just need to remember this order public protected default private and public being the strongest and private being the weakest okay so one more thing now what if for the method uh, through some unchecked exception let's say null pointer exception which is an unchecked exception so we have uh, okay let's first correct this all right so it's perfectly fine if the parent class method is throwing unchecked exception let's try to do this with child class exception also it is also 
fine. So for unchecked exception, let's say can a parent class method throw different unchecked exception. Let's say array index out of bounds exception. Both are unchecked. So in case of unchecked exceptions, there are uh, no rules. Okay, for unchecked exceptions we do not have any rules and regulations <laughs> but <clears throat> what if uh, we want to throw a checked exception exception class itself is a checked exception so now here uh, the child class method is throwing a broader exception basically array index out of bounds is a child of exception class right so this is a broader exception so what if the child class method tries to throw a broader exception okay so it gives a compile time error okay what if both throws same exception same checked exception then it's fine oh now it's giving some error and reported exception okay now here it says either you, you must since it's a checked exception so you must put a try catch or let's say i write here throws exception all right so the point here is yeah if both are say, uh, throwing same uh, checked exception then it's fine now we saw that if child cannot throw a broader checked exception let's say child can't throw a broader checked exception all right so this is a checked exception and this is an unchecked exception and it is a, a narrower right so child class method is throwing a narrow exception basically so let's try this as well so compilation successful and running also is fine okay so child class method basically cannot throw a broader means uh, the class which is coming higher in the uh, your exception classes hierarchy so that exception can't be thrown by child class method all right and for unchecked exception we saw that uh, there is nothing such sort of restriction in java so this is related to exceptions excess privileges so we also saw that weaker to stronger relationship is basically in case of excess privileges is allowed or uh, either you have you must have the same excess privilege okay then uh, we also saw what if the methods are non-static how the things behave and what if the methods are static how things behave now one more thing here in case of static i forgot to tell you guys that in case of static it's it's actually depending upon the type of reference variable all right so the reference the object reference was of child class but the method which was invoked it is now depending upon what type of this reference variable is okay so it is a reference variable of type parent class so parent class method gets invoked similarly let's try this now child c equals let's say i type cast it back and c dot show let's see okay so the reference variable this time is of uh, child class so child class method gets invoked okay so in case of static methods it's also not overriding it's actually called method hiding and uh, it depends upon uh, your uh, type of reference variable which method would be invoked and in case of your non-static methods it depends upon the type of object all right it depends upon the type of object which object you have created then at one time it will be decided by the jvm that which method would be invoked okay so i hope uh, these points are all these points are clear to you you can practice your own as well by running the code and see what all in what cases exceptions are coming in what cases uh, your compile time errors are there what is the output um, 
maybe some combinations i might have missed as well but uh, i hope majority of the points uh, i tried to uh, explain you guys so now finally thank you so much for watching the video 